Welcome to our series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. From the words of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. The Avatar, Part 3, From the Mother. That is to say, however great, however conscious, however powerful he may be, one avatar cannot by himself realize the supermental life on earth. It is either a group in time, extending over a period of time, or a group spread out in space, perhaps both, that are indispensable for this realization. I am convinced of it. Concerning my avatarhood, in what way can the opinion of people have any importance? If I am not an avatar, the belief of thousands of devotees cannot make that I should be. On the other hand, if I am, the denial of the whole world cannot prevent me from being. From Sri Aurobindo, the word avatara means a descent it is a coming down of the divine below the line which divides the divine from the human world or status. An avatar, roughly speaking, is one who is conscious of the presence and power of the divine born in him or descended into him and governing from within his will and life and action. He feels identified inwardly with this divine power and presence. The reason for which the avatars descend is to raise up man again and again, developing in him a higher and ever higher humanity, a greater and yet greater development of divine being bringing more and more of heaven again and again upon the earth until our toil is done, our work accomplished, and such Ananda fulfilled in all, even here, even in this material universe. The avatar comes to reveal the divine nature in man above this lower nature and to show what are the divine works, free, unegoistic, disinterested, impersonal, universal, full of the divine light, the divine power, and the divine love? He comes as the divine personality, which shall fill the consciousness of the human being and replace the limited egoistic personality, so that it shall be liberated out of ego into infinity and universality, out of birth into immortality. He comes as the divine power and love, which calls men to itself, so that they may take refuge in that, and no longer in the insufficiency of their human wills and the strife of their human fear, wrath, and passion, and liberated from all this unquiet and suffering, may live in the calm and bliss of the divine. An avatar is supposed to be from birth. Each soul at its birth takes from the cosmic mind life and matter to shape a new external personality for himself. What prevents the divine from doing the same? What is continued from birth to birth is the inner being. There are two sides of the phenomenon of avatarhood. 
the divine consciousness behind and the instrumental personality. The divine consciousness is omnipotent, but it has put forth the instrumental personality in nature under the conditions of nature, and it uses it according to the rules of the game. The avatar is not supposed to act in a non-human way. He takes up human action and uses human methods with the human consciousness in front and the divine behind. If he did not, his taking a human body would have no meaning and would be of no use to anybody. He could just have well stayed above and done things from there. What do you mean by lust? Avatars can be married and have children, and that is not possible without sex. They can have friendships, enmities, family feelings, etc., etc. These are vital things. I think you are under the impression that an avatar must be a saint or a yogi. One can be the head of a spiritual organization or the messiah of a religion or an avatar without in this life reaching the supermind and beyond. I have said that the avatar is one who comes to open the way for humanity to a higher consciousness. If nobody can follow the way, then either our conception of the thing, which is also that of Christ and Krishna and Buddha, is all wrong, or the whole life and action of the avatar is quite futile. X seems to say that there is no way and no possibility of following, that the struggles and sufferings of the avatar are unreal and all humbug. There is no possibility of struggle for one who represents the divine. Such a conception makes nonsense of the whole idea of avatarhood. There is then no reason in it, no necessity for it, no meaning in it. The divine, being all-powerful, can lift people up without bothering to come down on earth. It is only if it is part of the world arrangement that he should take upon himself the burden of humanity and open the way that avatarhood has any meaning. If your argument is that the life, actions, struggles of the avatar, that is, Ramas, Krishnas, are unreal because the divine is there and knows it is all a maya, in man also there is a self, a spirit that is immortal, untouched, divine. You can say that man's sufferings and ignorance are only put on, shams, unreal. But if a man feels them as real, and if the avatar feels his work and the difficulties to be serious and real? If the existence of the divinity is of no practical effect, what is the use of a theoretical admission? The manifestation of the divinity in the avatar is of help to man because it helps him to discover his own divinity, find the way to realize it, if the difference is so great that the humanity by its very nature prevents all possibility of following the way opened by the avatar, it merely means that there is no divinity in man that can respond to the divinity in the avatar. An avatar or vibhuti have the knowledge that is necessary for their work. They need not have more. There was absolutely no reason why Buddha should know what was going on in Rome. 
An avatar even does not manifest all the divine omniscience and omnipotence. He has not come for any such unnecessary display. All that is behind him, but not in the front of his consciousness. As for the vibhuti, the vibhuti need not even know that he is a power of the divine. Some vibhutis, like Julius Caesar, for instance, have been atheists. Buddha himself did not believe in a personal God, only in some impersonal and indescribable permanent. The avatar is necessary when a special work is to be done and in crisis of the evolution. The avatar is a special manifestation, while for the rest of the time it is the divine working within the ordinary human limits as a vibhuti. <laughs>